Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life Extend Show. See what we did there? Or X10 for short. And both will be moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, the New York Times has published an article about the link between aging and the higher vulnerability to COVID-19 in the elderly. This is not new information to the longevity community. Lifespan.io did a story on this in April of 2020, which we encourage you to check out in the description below, if you haven't already. The article reported the opinion of different experts in the aging field, according to whom the aging immune system is an underappreciated driver of the increased risk in old people. According to these experts, the high level of chronic inflammation commonly observed in the elderly messes up with the immune response, which explains among other things why the elderly are generally more prone to infectious disease and don't respond well to vaccines. The interviewed experts said that it's important to take into account the particular immune status of older people when designing studies for COVID-19 treatments. So as previously stated, this is not new information. Nevertheless, it is important that a mainstream outlet like the New York Times is reporting this information. For our next story, a small study at Cedar sinai Medical Center tested the effects of nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN for short, administration on older patients affected by COVID-19. NMN is a precursor of NAD+, meaning that the body can transform the former into the latter via chemical reactions. NAD+, is a crucial coenzyme involved in a myriad of critical metabolic processes. NAD plus supply dwindles as we age, which affects the body's ability to control inflammation, among many other things. In the study, a small number of patients, all older than 50, were treated with an NMN cocktail, and all the patients saw significant improvements. Most of the patients were fever-free in a few days, and none of them were admitted to the intensive care unit or intubation post-treatment. The study authors suggest that NMN deserves further study as a potential treatment for complicated COVID-19 cases in the elderly. But remember, this study was small, so we definitely can't talk about NMN being a miracle drug. Moving on, metformin is an off-patent drug that's been used for decades to treat type 2 diabetes. Until now, scientists didn't quite understand how metformin is so effective at controlling blood glucose. Researchers at Salk Institute ran a study that revealed the importance of certain body enzymes for metformin to function, as well as how these same enzymes regulated by metformin affect inflammation in mice. Metformin is known to activate a crucial metabolic pathway known as AMPK, which is normally activated by exercise. In turn, AMPK controls two other proteins, Raptor and TSC2, which blocks another protein called MTORC1. In this new study, Salk researchers disconnected AMPK from Raptor and TSC2 in mice and then fed the animals a diabetes-inducing diet. When the mice were later administered metformin, the drug no longer had the same effects on liver cells of unmodified diabetic mice, which suggests that metformin can't work if the link between AMPK and mTOR C1 is severed. The data also showed that metformin normally turns on anti-inflammatory pathways, but also the AMPK, TSC2, and Raptor are crucial for this effect to take place. The researchers hypothesized that some of the beneficial effects of exercise may derive from turning on AMPK and shutting off mTOR C1. So it might be possible to target interventions to do this pharmacologically and mimic the benefits of exercise. For our next story, obesity is a comorbidity that often accompanies a lot of other diseases, such as diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. Obesity has also been observed to exacerbate COVID-19, and it correlates with aging processes such as telomere shortening and inflammation. In a new study, scientists used CRISPR to create particular fat cells that in mice alleviated obesity. Fat tissue in our bodies can be white or brown. White fat tissues tends to accumulate to store energy, whereas brown fat is more readily burned to generate heat and release energy. Brown fat is also inversely correlated with body mass index and has been a potential target for anti-obesity therapies for a while. 
In this new study, scientists modified adipocyte precursor cells, that is, cells that can become fat cells, so that they could then differentiate into human brown-like cells, termed humble cells. Humble cells demonstrated to possess several properties of brown fat, and when transplanted into mice, they seemed to turn into fully functional fat tissue. The control mice received white fat cells, whereas other mice received genuine brown fat cells, or humble cells. When fed a high-fat diet, control mice gained more fat than the other two groups. Mice who received brown fat or humble cells had improvements in insulin sensitivity and glucose tolerance, and the positive effects lasted as late as 12 weeks after the transplant. The researchers suggest that brown fat cell transplantation may one day be used in humans to help treat and or prevent obesity, but this remains to be seen yet. For our final story, Lifespan.io's blog launched a new weekly series of articles on regenerative medicine and its advancements. Tissue engineering and regenerative medicine has the long-term goal of making us able to replace every tissue and organ in our bodies. But the road is long and there are still many limitations. For example, cell transplants don't work very well in already aged bodies, and organ transplants are even more challenging, in that they're very invasive, and even young organs tend to catch up with the age of the body it's been transplanted into. Still, regenerative medicine definitely has its place in longevity research, and if you'd like to learn more about it, you should follow Lifespan.io's new blog series by Greg Gillespie. That's all the news for this video. Remember, there's a few free, quick, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, make sure you like this video, share this video on your social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and remember, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that and click the notification bell to select all notifications. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.